Hallå, Raffel. Hello, can you hear me? Now I can hear you, yes. Hi. Hi, Raphael, how are you? Hi, Frederic. Great, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Um, Frederic, please meet Sandra. Hi. She's in the room as Hi. well. She's in the... Um, in the IBE group from IBE. the University of Bern, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So yeah. Sandra, you, you will you will speak like two minutes about IV, what IVE does, right? Can you? Yes. So okay. it's it's Benjamin who is talking. It's not me because it's like his resort. But um, well, he's joining in a few minutes as well. I told him five to twelve. That would be great because I would like to conduct a quick tech check. Um, let me first. Um, can you uh, can you try to share your screen, Frederick? Um, yep. Your presentation. Okay, that works. Awesome. Okay. And do you see me? Ah. Do you hear me? See me? I see you. I hear you. It's awesome. You have a okay. great logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're good at marketing. <laughs> I should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You pitched so many times. I remember the AIT session that we had together. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let me just share my screen as well. And you could quickly tell me whether you can see it. Yes. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. OK, awesome. So. Um, general setup once again um the idea is to just quickly introduce the partners um and but let's keep it extremely short uh so like two to maximum three minutes per partner and then um i will briefly go into the programs that the students and researchers can apply for uh the um First Ventures, Inner Booster, and Venture Kick. And then I would hand over to you, Frederick. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Frederick, really, uh, you are the keynote speaker, really, you, you own the you own the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever you prefer to do, um, mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Generally, um, we want to close at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, if you want to do it any longer, I mean, it's it's up to you. But um, I would rather keep it short. I think. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, there's one thing I would like to test with you still is. Um, no, I think I don't need to test it. It's it's about the polls. I will I will quickly do a poll in the beginning just to mm -hmm. learn about the background of the people. Mm -hmm. How many people? students mm -hmm. uh, and how many people work on a concrete idea already and uh, Rafael so the objective again is uh, we have like common students researchers scientists who wanted to become entrepreneurs so it's more like a motivational talk it's yes it's it's um general motivation like your story mm -hmm. um and then obviously if you could lose a few words about how you successfully applied for the grants and for mm -hmm. the financial support mm -hmm. that would be very interesting mm -hmm. cool Okay, so um, Raphael, uh, Benjamin von Mott is trying to enter our Zoom call. Okay, I will check. I have many people in the room already. Um, is he Mr. X? 
No, I don't think he should be called ben Benjamin von Mott. I don't have him in the waiting list yet. Okay, I'll check. Um, he messaged me that he's called von Mott Benjamin. Is it? Hmm. Rafael, is it live streaming somewhere? Live streaming? Yeah. Yes, it is live streaming. Yes. Oh, okay. So people can see from different platforms as well. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. They, they need to be in the meeting and I manually um, uh, admit them to the room. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. So we have, we know who is in the room. And uh, we also record the call and uh, post it somewhere. We would like to do that, obviously, before we do, if there's anything that you would like to cut out, um, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we would definitely share it with you before before um, posting it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yes, it's being recorded. I can't see Benjamin yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Then he will he will join it um, with the others, and he can do his job anyways. Yeah. Okay. I will just um, let my colleague Anand from the SICC join as well. Right now. Hi, Anand. Can you hear me? Well, anyway, we have 12. So I would let the others enter the room. Uh, Sandra, I can't see Benjamin yet. So he should be in there. We'll check that. All right. Maybe he's, he's registered with a different name. Yeah. Oh, good. So then let's get it going. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Venture Briefing. Please mute your microphones and keep your video on so that we can see each other's faces. And we'll give like one or two more minutes for everyone to have the chance to join the room, and then we'll get started. All right, so let's get going. Welcome to the Venture Briefing. Welcome everyone, wherever you are. Um, this is the Venture Briefing Burn. So I'm assuming most of you joining are in, are in Burn. Um, this is a session that is organized by Venture Lab together with the Gebhard Rüff Stiftung. Um, and co-organized with the Institute for Value-Based Entrepreneurship and the Swiss Indian Chamber of Commerce. So we're very happy to have you all here. Uh, I hope it will be very interesting. Um, just for, uh, for, for, for some, some of the game rules here, it would be great if you could uh, keep your microphones muted until you want to speak. Um, 
but uh, keep your video on if possible so that we can all see each other. Um, one more thing, if you have questions, yeah, then uh, write them in the chat. We'll find some time to answer them, and, uh, but, but uh, that, that gives us a good, good backlog of things to discuss. All right, and because we have little time, let's get going. So this is the agenda um, today, uh, what to expect. Uh, we'll briefly talk about uh, the, the hosts here and especially about the programs that could help you um, get your, your um, project funded. And then we'll hand over to Frederick Johnson Joseph. He's the co-founder and CEO of Surgeons Lab, a super, super interesting entrepreneur, I can already tell you. Um, and then we'll have um, lots of time for, for, uh, for answering your questions as well. Yeah, and uh, without further ado, let's get this started. Maybe we would like to know a little bit about you. So if you could quickly answer a few questions. I'm just launching the poll. Uh, so we'd like to know what your background is whether you are at a university at this time or uh, not, and then also about your entrepreneurial motivation. So thank you for all the answers. We're almost finished. You're super fast. Three more people could vote. Okay, I give you 10 more seconds. Awesome. So um, just to show you the result, um, we have, yeah, I think it's, a, it's an interesting mix of people. Um, about half of the people of you are at a university. Um, and yeah, we have a good, good mix of people who have an idea who, or who have already founded a startup um, or who are thinking about it. All right, good. So what you get out of this today, um, yeah, we want to give you the idea about um, what you need to know, yeah, what, what the next steps are. Obviously, an hour is not going to cover everything, but especially like the financial support and no money is something that is of concern for everybody. Um, we want to introduce you to the possibilities here. Uh, and thank you to our partners. Um, I would quickly um, introduce you to the Swiss Indian Chamber of Commerce, um, especially their young professional network is very active in supporting entrepreneurs in the um, yeah, international outreach to India, um, which is very, very interesting. It's, it's ob obviously one of the most exciting markets of the future. And we are very happy to run the um, annual program, the AIT program with them, which is yeah for 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 supporting cross national entrepreneurship. And Frederick is one of the winners of this program, um, so we're very very happy to um, have a winner in the room. So if you have any questions about uh, cross national entrepreneurship, um, you could address those questions too. Then we have the Institute for Value-Based Entrepreneurship, and we have Benjamin and Sandra in the room. Benjamin or Sandra, um, would you like to say a few words about uh, what you guys do? Yes, I will introduce IVE for a little bit. So hello everyone, my name is Benjamin. I'm the head of IVE. IVE is the abbreviation for Institute of Value-Based Entrepreneurship. And our vision is to jointly shape people into role models and decision makers who will shape and take responsibility for the world of tomorrow with their values. 
We are a university association that promotes entrepreneurship among students at the University of Bern and Basel. And as Albert Einstein once said, try not to become just a man of success, but rather a man of value. So we made this to our guideline and are committed to entrepreneurship, including strengths and values. So each semester we organize workshops at the University of Bern and Basel. And in these workshops, you can learn about your own top five strengths and get to know your values better. We would be very happy to see some of you next semester to join one of our events. Um, even IVE consists out of 10 students that have a, a study direction mainly in business administration and economics but also archaeology is represented that makes it quite diverse. And yes, since a short period of time, we have a partnership together with Venture Lab, and uh, we are happy to support today's event. If you're interested about IVE, you can reach out to us via our social media, IVE Burn, or our homepage, ivieinstitute.org. So thank you for the chance, and then um, I will give back to you, Rafael. Thank you very much for the introduction, Benjamin. Um, so if you are a student, if you are at the University of Bern, and I think you are also at, at other campuses in Switzerland, Zurich, I've seen, um, if you want to join a great student organization that focuses on value-based entrepreneurship, uh, check out their website, ivinstitute.org, and get in touch with them. And then we have one more partner. Um, it's also a new partnership, um, very specialized, but extremely interesting if you are in that space. It's the DCB. Um, it's the Diabetes Center Burn. If you are, by chance, involved in diabetes uh, focused research development if you have a startup um, or a project idea in that space this could be extremely interesting um, check out their website dcb innovationchallenge.com um, because here switzerland really has a very unique positioning and these guys are able to support you again there's funding available that you can apply for and uh, yeah um, Hope, hope that um, there will be one of you winning this. And now I'd like to uh, talk about the programs that um, the Gebert Rüff Foundation supports. There are three of them. It's First Ventures, InnoBooster, and VentureKick. And basically, they all support startups that are spun out of research. So if you are at a university and you study something or you develop something in your research and you get a great idea that has a market potential, then Gebert Rüff Foundation wants to help you to um, start a company yeah, and be commercially successful. Um, Gebert Rüff Foundation is obviously a nonprofit organization um, they are very concerned about uh, the world of science and uh, Switzerland as a, as, a, as a nation of science. Um, but entrepreneurship is totally central. So they are uh, supporting the commercial side of, um, of research, development, and academia. And so what do they offer? Um, first of all, there's VentureKick. And VentureKick is a program that we as, as VentureLab run uh, operationally um, on their behalf. Um, we think it's, a, it's an extremely exciting concept. Um, you can win up to 150,000 um, francs for your startup project. There are three stages. Um, and what is special about it is that uh, on the one hand, it is money coming from a nonprofit organization, but uh, the panel that decides who is going to get the, the money um, is set up by business angels, by investors from Switzerland. And 
Uh, obviously, these guys know very well uh, what the criteria of success are. So um, getting venture kick is not is not something that is easy um, because you're you're going to have to pitch. But if you get the support of venture kick, then you do you do not only get the money from venture kick, but you get like basically the the um, proof that. Um, investors from switzerland believe in you and it's becoming much much easier to raise more money yeah um and you we have these kickers camps where you get the mentoring and i would say that's the most important side of the program the money is one thing which is nice but but the 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 much more important part is that we have the industry experts, we have the investors who are going to coach you um, to, to get to the next stage. Yeah. Then there's one more program that could be connected. Uh, and you see it on the right side. It's InnoBooster. It's another 150,000 francs. These 150,000 francs would not go directly to your startup, but to the university or research institution that is working with you. So if you have a, a very research intense project where you need the support of a professor uh, or an institute, then um, you could apply for InnoBooster. They would get some third party funding and then obviously it gets much easier for you as a startup to have the collaboration uh, that you need and finally because not everybody of you is from a university there's one special program that is uh, for the the um, startups of the universities of applied sciences um, here again, you can win 150,000 francs. Um, so if you sum it up, it could be theoretically 450,000 francs that you can win through the programs of Gilbert Ruf Foundation. Obviously, um, you win a, it's unlikely that you will win all of them, but definitely check out the website grstiftung.ch and see what could be interesting to you. The application is straightforward, but not simple, uh, because you need to prepare your pitch, especially. Yeah. So, so make sure that when when you're ready to apply, that your uh, application material is really sound. And um, I think Frederick could tell tell you a few of his insights about how to win this thing because you did <laughs> yeah this is the process i think um frederick might may want to lose a few words about this and um yeah this this leads me to introduce frederick uh frederick johnson joseph i i think he's a an extremely interesting uh person in terms of his background uh, Frederick comes from India. Uh, he studied in, in Germany and started his research there and then decided to move on to Switzerland. He's now based in Bern and works on Surgeon's Lab. Surgeon's Lab has an, uh, a super innovative product. And yeah, Frederick, could you tell us more about that? Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Rafael. And, um... Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks uh, for uh, for being here. And it's uh, it's truly my pleasure. Maybe I can introduce myself uh, a bit, touching upon um, what Rafael added. Um, um, I I I started my I'm I'm basically a biomedical engineer by background, and um, I I wanted to do uh, something in, in in basically medicine. So that's where the whole story started. I will have this conversation quite little free, free flow. Like I was asked to tell the story and like kind of having it inspirational. I'll be happy at least 10% uh, or 1% of this crowd is turning into an entrepreneur or uh, winning some of these uh, grants. I'll be very happy. I'll keep it very free flow. I have though I have some slides. Uh, you can actually ask me any questions. 
and um, we will take from there um yeah the, the the thing is i i wanted to become an entrepreneur not just by that uh, uh it was very early when i was even before doing my bachelor i wanted to do something i was always seeing that the innovative things happen in the western world i'm coming from india and i was trying to dig deeper and then there there there, there i found that uh, you know artificial heart was something which is very much uh, a hot topic 10 12 years ago by then and still now but um then i was say okay well, biomedical engineers are those who are responsible for making this but then you can build it uh, let's say in the last uh, 5 years i was uh, trying to see okay what what would be the way that I could uh, do? Maybe I can invent something, but how, how can I make my invention reach uh, common people like a patient or how can I make it someone get benefited out of it? So this was the key driver of the motivation that I was trying to find answer for all my all my questions in the in the time period. And then I landed up becoming an entrepreneur and uh, I am starting my career from here. So it, uh, it was a very smooth transition from from academics uh, to uh, core research, uh, scientific uh, aspects in the topics of uh, image guided surgeries. That's my core specialization. And then uh, moving, um, taking my own uh, doctoral thesis topic into my company, I would say. Uh, I have some slides. Um, just let me know if you can see it, some of you. Um, I hope yes, okay. Um, as you see, um, it's going to be truly a story. Surgeon's Lab is an university-based spin-off from the University of Bern here, from the Ortog Center for Biomedical Engineering. So Ortog is basically artificial organs. So we have different groups here working on various different topics. Uh, we are across the street, very close to the university hospital here in Bern. Um, many of the groups here work very closely uh, with what uh, a need for a surgeon or a physician in different uh, disciplines uh, we we see a lot of translational potential and uh, we had also like in the past uh, several uh, successful startups uh, spin-offs they are very large companies today and uh, surgeons lab is one among them uh, very recently um, uh, how, how we began into the venture kick process or into the venture lab was uh, really a fascinating story i would say and i see from the pool that uh, many of around 50 percent of them have a startup idea or wanted to become a become an entrepreneur i i truly see that the first thing that um being being from an university based uh, based research um truly the science uh, there is always in, that's my opinion there is always a commercial aspect or an economical aspect involved in any scientific topic you take um be it be it even fundamental research you could uh, you could dig in finding some economical benefits ultimately uh, science is in my in my theory science is basically for the wellness or goodness for a common man or a, of any living being I, I i i see from there so i would say I would say that uh, the whole journey uh, from from the start of a research to that of a commercialization is really fascinating and wonderful. And uh, you will have a lot of peaks and valleys, uh, lots of ups and downs. Uh, I used to tell my men my mentors and my professors that you will have like probably 10 good news. And, and at the same time, you will have like thousands of bad, <laughs> bad or no, like shocking news or like uh, unexpected uh, news. This, this, you know, the whole life becomes like very much mixed. And uh, it's a very good learning. I'm, I'm very young and it's a very good learning process that uh, I believe also the audience, um, that the whole feeling of uh, getting something um especially especially when you win something or when you when you have a success for the hard work that you have put in is is really uh, exciting i would say i can tell a bit about what surgeons lab does um we are into the brain microsurgical uh, assimilation business um this is also my phd topic so the, i remember the first day of my interview when i came here to burn uh, i was interviewed by a surgeon who is my co-founder today and he was my he, uh, supervisor, uh, co-supervisor. He's a surgeon, neurosurgeon, by the way. And he was in, he was asking me like, uh, what's your background? And then later on, the story was like, we have this problem. Can we address this? 
this how it was uh, it was very clearly starting there was a clinical need a surgeon who is across the street had a had a kind of a problem when he see a patient every day that he was not able to plan his procedure or train uh, train patient specific cases very often so there it originated that uh, then i came in i started my phd um initially before even starting a solution to what actually the statements that he that he gave i spent uh, quite a lot of time i would say uh, in in the surgery room uh, so i was participating uh, most um, in all the case meetings the complete workflow so you could just correlate this if you are coming from some other field um, out of uh, out of clinical aspect or medicine this would also apply for uh, ict based uh, ideas or it also can be biotech or non non biotech um what i mean to say is uh, here is uh, understanding the end user you know i always think from the end and not from the beginning so uh, you, you have to see where you are landing up uh, your solution or your goal think uh, from there uh, this will act automatically drive you because your thing is at the end then you keep actually traveling towards uh, towards a progress you travel towards there you will have like in between lot of lot of obstacles but i think life is all about uh, crossing all these obstacles um i was able to like go through all this customer validation process uh, uh there was truly emotions involved uh, what we do here is like uh, we have as you see here in uh, like a dummy like a toy or a model what you see here we call a neuropod um uh, the surgeon will be able to uh, plan do the exact same uh, surgical procedure open brain surgical procedure with a true realistic feeling uh, with the cardiac pulsation blood flow and everything in this uh, object uh, putting in all the implants trying out different strategies before going for a patient because all these structures in the brain they are very complicated and if you do some kind of uh, uh, critical malpractice or a wrong procedure then the patient life is immediately put at risk and if something goes wrong uh, the patient dies within 5 minutes and this is very commonly the case that we see uh, and this is uh, also in the other terms which contributes to stroke hemorrhage pa paralysis and uh, inability to walk and uh, speak and so many other uh, things Uh, we usually see a lot of post operative complications even after the surgery patients are not usually allowed or not able to go back to their normal life during my process i was able to clearly see that um when when a patient was lying in it was one of the one of the real uh, thing that happened here um we, we had a patient in in the surgical room and uh, and the, and the man was around uh, 45 years old and uh, he was just asking uh, the surgeon that can i talk to my son uh, for five last five minutes of my life but it was you know it was truly truly a, a, a very heart melting uh, words that he came can i actually meet my son five minutes before uh, the start of the surgery so um i i felt myself in in the same surgical bed uh, what if actually i want i'm actually grown up or i have such a kind of a surgical thing and uh, he try he he realizes that he is in the last minutes of his life but that's not uh, true but then the surgeon had to reply that i will i'll make sure that your life is not in danger and i'll be very careful uh, making sure then you know the, the the thing is also we also see surgeons facing really very critical uh pathways entering into the brain going into the treating the disease so there was a bit of emotional aspect involved um so this actually motivated also as an entrepreneur you will tr you will try to really see that when when you develop something when you actually try to bring that as a product or a service there is always end benefits there is you can list down as a value proposition in business we call uh, so risk list down what are we what are they going to get better uh, out of your solution and this is how it looks um, our our simulator is basically compatible with different imaging modalities starting from an optical microscope with a neuro a high complex uh, uh, a million dollar uh, neurosurgical microscope uh, with a ct and a c arm angio suit as well as with an mri Uh, so uh, pre planning is done but the business case is we also do resident training so those who do medical education they also get hands on with the same scenario because uh, a student is not allowed to train on a on a patient because uh, there is no hands on experience in there 
I would I would uh, tell a bit about as I said about the customer validation. Um, I I keep telling also my team uh, the the, um, the the biggest uh, the biggest point or uh, I would say a turnaround point for Surgeons Lab is. Uh, um, I was able to talk to a lot of customers. So our customers are basically neurosurgeons, uh, medical students, uh, neurosurgical uh, uh, senior doctors, experienced uh, interventional radiologists, neuroradiologists who also do catheter procedures, surgical staff, surgical team, those who are inside the world. So these people are the end users. So be it any of your idea that you have, like talk as much as you can before ending up saying that I have an idea. So your idea can be actually uh, brainstorming, rock breaking, entering even into Mars. But uh, for example, uh, even, even, even without knowing what your customer wants, what is a real pain? So we call this as a pain game. So pain and a solution game, try, try to list down as much as you can even be even be with um for example you know a surgeon let, let me put it this way a surgeon comes to your problem and say i have this pathology i cannot access this in the 3d three-dimensional view this this would be a very technical problem a surgeon would come uh, came to me but there was also a surgical staff she was a nurse she said okay see we have like four or five machines here like we have got more than 40 50 wires running around the surgical ward but this seems to be a very small problem actually it's a real problem in the surgical environment uh, we also try to address that you know a simulation uh, simulator but but uh, th this is this is what i would say it would be a true story uh, for uh, for any uh, surgical or a non surgical any any kind of startup idea i would say spend as much as of time uh, like uh, have detailed call phone call meet them like before we have to have be very, you will be you need to be very well prepared for that try to also record this call i would i even ask them can i record these calls and like i keep listening to them that's how then you understand what they really wanted that did not start from there then we took that okay then we brainstormed we had brainstorming sessions with the end users again they picked handpicked who also had a good technological idea and then we had like a brainstorming session we take a paper piece of paper and a pen break down how your simulation or your end solution looks like. So it was like a hand sketch. I even have it in my office. Um, the very first sketches we made for our uh, simulator uh, and uh, try to see, iterate it, make variances. We call in the, the engineering variances, make variances. Also keep yourself also in mind, uh, economics, uh, how much they pay at the end. Um, so we, we developed the core design from there and then there was also uh, we call it as a lean practice lean lean process where uh, immediately go back to the end user again taking uh, a good feedback or a solution uh, whether would this work or uh, do we need to actually change it in a different way um, for for us it was it was a good combination where, because we are across the street and we very well quite often meet or have a phone call or uh, even I'm like my my surgeon, like my co-founder, we are meeting at two o'clock, for example. So we meet we, we meet quite often. So you keep having this uh, proper testing and a feedback mechanism. Um, it is very hard in my in my sense. It is very hard to satisfy an end user. Um, uh, you will you will you will see that this process be even with the medical product or with any other product. You have they will come up with fascinating feedback. I. I had a very uh, common um, common thing uh, because we, we were de developing something and you also see on the other side, for example, in technology, Apple was doing fascinating thing, for example. And most of the surgeons are all, always like, oh, uh, you who are technology driven. OK, I see actually, I, for example, um, there is a good touch ability there and I see a very flat HDH monitor there. Can I can we have this also in our system? And for example, like um, you, we have a kind of a robotic, semi robotic environment in the surgical OR. Can we bring that? Oh, actually, first we are trying to solve a problem and <laughs> we have to address this all one by one. For, for So this this kind of things pop up and it is up to you, the entrepreneurs. Are. So you have to prioritize which should come first, for example. It's easy to actually design an H2H uh, iPhone or an or a iPad and then give it to a common man, but it's not a medical device. Or a, so th there is there is a bit of a lot of difference that uh, you, you will adhere. 
so it's up to you you have to know the know how and uh, the validation is a constant process it's a university based spin off uh, so the development process was happening in our talk and then we went to insurance vita we conducted clinical st- uh, feasibility studies and then we validated the uh, product it's a good mix i would say so overall having all this set uh, so then we went to innospace uh, when it was a very basic startup idea uh, there was this um, a kickers camp which was also supported by you know space together they conduct a business creation workshop uh, uh, where it all started so um, i had a really very good feeling uh, after this five days of workshop the, there was no start there was kind of a startup idea but it was really good feeling when uh, we had experts uh, not just theoretically experts but they were already ceos of well established companies giving talks sharing their real life experiences and this was one of the one of the real uh, real uh, positive point about uh, the venture kick thing i would say and we had uh, we had also like uh, inno space also supports uh, entrepreneurs to validate uh, talk to different experts you have like uh, initial core initial coaching and a core coaching opportunity even before you say okay can i actually go in go think of a business so you, you need a pitch deck uh, but uh, still uh, i think i started my process also in the same time i went to venture kick i remember i called someone uh someone from venture kick and asking can i apply for venture kick i'm coming from city of birth and uh, yes i think that was that that that, that uh, happened and then I, we were invited for a for a small uh, revision of the pitch deck in 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 zurich in the sony office and then it it went on we were all say again uh, so i was invited for this pitch event uh, it was a true feeling it was very nice feeling that we had like uh, a very large jury of business angels coming from different background shooting on questions for like a short period of time and uh, and you have to be like you have to be very well prepared uh, and uh, like uh, trying to impress not even impress like answer all of them and this this is really a good experience and uh, at the end of the day you are graded and i like what the thing i like is you also get the result from the same uh, from them from same day and you know whether you, you did a good job in the day or not and uh, this this is also this this is also this is also really a good thing i would say and uh, from there the venture kick process started um i even i even quoted it several at several places uh, i would have not started surgeon's lab if there was no venture kick uh, i can i can i can simply admit uh, this fact if there was no venture kick uh, i would have not started i would have still been a scientist i would have still uh, because i published a lot also in the beginning and in the past and i was try i was uh, i was very much um, very much liking to publish a lot of scientific publications then i had a feeling one day that uh, after during this process why can i not make a device that can actually go into the market and then make the others publish from your invention so so this was also the i would still I'm, I'm, i wanted to publish and i will be publishing also but then this this kind of uh, transformation uh, i would say venture kick is is really really a good uh, platform and the 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 time they give you around 9 to 10 months of period from the stage one they validate you they see you how how you you grow uh, and it gives a very good discipline i would say for an entrepreneur as a, as a self uh, as a person it gives you really excellent discipline the the uh, intensive coaching that we have with uh, jody and beat and also the colleagues from venture kick it, it gives you uh, uh, it gives you for example uh, for any high risk project i think they they are the best guys i would say so they they drive you in the right way so jody calls it as the people from mencheki calls it's a real kick they kick you on your ass at the back to keep moving forward and and i i really like that and uh, we most of the process most of the things what surgeon's lab did happen only through between the stage 1 and stage 2 uh, it was a big it was a very big challenge uh, so we were it was also Uh, from stage 1 we entered into stage 2 and to stage 3 actually i i thought we would not <laughs> really cross this but um, there was some tractions that we in, in also in the market in partners and that actually helped us in addition to this we also had be advanced 
uh, for the people from Bern, it's also a good platform. Where, uh, I think it's one of the mandate from the Bern Economic Development Agency here in Bern. Uh, they also run co co coaching programs in different, uh, they have uh, two, two, I think two levels, uh, which also takes you from uh, idea phase to that of uh, product market fit level, uh, series of workshops, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions and uh, um, and uh, events also. So they also let you pitch among the investors um, and so on. And also Burn Economic Development Agency was also like supporting us. Um, so with the, with the help of also the, the 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 whole scenario here, we were able to also win the Ipsomate Innovation Award uh, last December, and uh, so we won the first prize uh, in this year. And this captivated, uh, including the the face of idea to that of the fund that we had, captivated us to move forward validating the market you know there is something you have it as an idea to to to, uh, to prototype or uh, to working device so this allowed us uh, to keep moving forward and we are still actually trying and struggling and keeping move, moving forward but when check it opens you i would say um, a gateway for a different set of resources uh, be it also uh, financial resources or also like expertise and uh, and uh, people will, will know that, okay, you do the right thing and you get a good access to them. And uh, I also truly value uh, more than more than financial resources. You can make money any day, uh, but uh, you will not find the right people to guide you uh, during this process. And I think, uh, yeah, you know, Swiss and uh, VentureKit does that uh, really great. Mm. And I would truly appreciate, you know, and I would encourage everyone here uh, to, to take uh, the whole process as uh, as a challenge, if if at all, if uh, you think that it's interesting, um, keep also looking for uh, supporting uh, from the stage. If you see um, a product or an idea can become a product one day, uh, try to also see that what what are the suitable grants that you can. This is called non dilutive money in business. So try to bring in non dilutive money because the investors will like. Uh, having more non to money it's basically free money it's a free lunch so try to have as much as free lunch get yourself grown and then try to run uh, in the race and uh, my true learnings as i said in the beginning uh, it's not easy it's not an easy life you know you cannot just uh, wake up on uh, wake up at uh, come to work at nine and then leave a job at five no <laughs> believe me you should also wake up with a very good motivation on sunday morning <laughs> and and i'm just i'm just uh, letting here know that um may, most of my most of my venture kick or venture lab related applications happened only in the week weekend and not in the weekday because i did not have time or it, otherwise it could have happened in the evening after eight or nine in the evening so 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 you you i so i was in the lab in the morning and then it happened the whole process happened only in the evening so the, if you if you spend if you think okay i don't spend time today on this then uh, so this is the true motivation i would say like it should keep you running keep talking to a lot of people, uh, fellow entrepreneurs, there are a lot of people. I think the, the ecosystem here in Bern is also going up really good. Uh, those few things are coming up naturally. Um, take all, all the opportunities, grab as much as you can, validate or uh, go into any of the guidelines of uh, any program that you apply or uh, funding or a grant that you apply. Um, before writing down anything, just read the guidelines properly and uh, the regulations that will really help you because that will tell you whether you are eligible or not. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time, simply. Uh, I have lost a lot. Um, maybe maybe I'm, I'm in like Surgeon's Lab as a story is shown today as uh, maybe I don't know if we are called as successful, but I would say that's not true. Uh, but because we had like uh, hundreds of uh, hundreds of <laughs> failures, which people never talk. Uh, but each of the failures, I would say, I, I truly admit, I realize I feel bad. Okay, I would have done. I, I could have done this better, but uh, take that as a true, true feedback. Correct yourself and uh, apply it next time, or get uh, get moving forward. And life should move forward, and as as well as every single second, then life of an entrepreneur should move forward. So because you 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 are you are the leader, you are you are driving the whole team. You will also have different kind of situations. So when you are running, also like um, having a team. 
so you should have all kinds of strength in you be be a very good all rounder i would i would say so you should be a good technologist be also a good good um, person who can understand your team and uh, motivating the team i think uh, it's it's the, it's a good learning and we see really that uh, surgeon's lab can address the unmet clinical need go into market uh, beat also for resident training and also for uh, patient specific case planning in the future we call that as pre operative uh, surgical preparation and uh, we have our partners like uh, different companies that we associate they they see a value in us and i i, I true i truly see that we will be able to fulfill all the goals that we had when we started off this as a company and uh, we wanted to keep growing and addressing the addressing the the problems in uh, in surgical neurosurgical field i would say and uh, feel free to contact me uh, you can write me email or also connect me on uh, linkedin um, i'll be happy very happy to share 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 any feedback or opinion as what i could know basically i would say and thank you so much Wow, thank you so much, Frederick. This was an, a super inspiring story. And you mentioned Jordi and Beat. Uh, Jordi always keeps saying, we hope we'll never need your product. But when we need it or when our doctor is needed, I mean, we are so glad that you built this thing because you're literally uh, improving our chances to live. Yeah. Um, and live quality lives after the um, operations. So a wonderful story and definitely one of the super interesting cases um, of Venture Kick. Yeah, we have lots of stories in the, in the chat and I want to make sure that we can cover as many as possible of them. Um, let me take the first one. Uh, Emily asks, um, and if we have no connection to any university, I mean, I will just briefly answer that. Um, well, build a connection to a university. If you want to apply for Venture Kick, I mean, read the guidelines. Uh, if you have something that is interesting to connect to science, then uh, reach out to professors and build a, build a connection there. And yes, it should be somehow related to science to, to apply for this kind of grant, but obviously, a lot of the other advice is applicable um, for any kind of pitch. Okay, um, Frederick, Benjamin has a question. Um, Benjamin, do you want to speak up? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I Hi, was, hello, Frederick. <laughs> um, I would like to know, so, or my question is, how did you know how to take the first entrepreneurial steps after having the idea? Because just having the idea is not enough to actually start and um, bring the idea on, on the street. So where did the help come from? Or how did you approach, or how did you approach um, the, this, this problem, this, this maybe also knowledge gap, which arises when you are very deep into science, but maybe don't have the actual business administration background that may can help. Um, uh, that's a good question. Um, so, so maybe we can put it this way, for example, when there is a scarcity of knowledge on any particular topic, so you look for answers, you look for resources. So that's a simple thing that I also did. So I was looking around, I uh, was also like trying to get answers. I talked to people. Um, so if, if, if we just talk only about a step uh, after entrepreneurial step for uh, having an idea. Uh, so uh, in the, all the, I was uh, naturally thinking also about in a business uh, business aspect, my, my group, we already had a spin off here and um, so my professor used to talk about it it's an achieving topic uh, due to an idea then i went on looking for different resources which i was not uh, aware of uh, i tried to learn all these things uh, for taking an idea to an entrepreneur steps and i started reading a lot of books i would say 
um, this will truly inspire you. Read a lot of, I, 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 I always like reading autobiographies of successful people. And uh, when you're reading this, you try to put uh, yourself in the, in the shoes of them. And uh, it's, it's a good, very, it's a very good feeling when you try to see that, okay, it doesn't have to be uh, only from, for example, a med tech or a life science based um, autobiography. It can be also any philosophical uh, books. Um, this will this will naturally turn you. And from idea to entrepreneur, because I did not have an answer, uh, how can I make my inventions take to the patient? Uh, then I started listing down the, the steps. Then at last I found that the only thing that I can do is make a business of my own rather than depending on others because nobody will believe that your your invention is uh, is good until you see <laughs> commercial potential in that. So that, that was the answer, I would say. All right. Thank you very much, Frederick. Matteo, you have the next question. Yeah, thank you. Hello, together. Um, hello, all. My question to you is, Frederick, um, a surgeon's lab specifically specialized in sur in brain surgeries or also on other or on surgeries performed on other parts of the body. Um, uh, at the moment, um, we specialize in brain surgery, uh, and we will still be specialized uh, 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 because that's. I, I think that's a very true differentiator that any of the other uh, direct or indir indirect competitors were not addressing it. And uh, I, I see that we have higher potential being even niche. I say it's niche in business term. I think then we can have at least this uh, space of market for us. And uh, if if at all we see really drastic uh, drastic opportunities in other surgeries, uh, they where our know how or our knowledge uh, and from the company could help, and then we we are truly open for other unmet clinical needs. Okay, so this doesn't directly come from your field of specialization when talking about academia. It's, it's just a, a space of market that you saw a lot of potential in it, and then you decided to specialize on brain surgery. <laughs> uh, not exactly. I would also say because I specialized in brain surgeries with my, based from neurosurgery on my academic okay. level. And then um, also on the market, for example, um, you know, you, 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 have to, you have to make small steps uh, when, when you talk about an innovative business. Putting legs in all, uh, I would say in the in the early phase will not really uh, you will not have time, and that's not a good idea in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Bjorn, you have a question. Yes, hello Frederick. Uh, Hi. My name is Ben Albrecht. I'm working in a Switzerland innovation park in Biel, and my question was. Uh, with who did you work together to build up the prototypes before going into industrialization? Um, we, we have a good uh, facility here uh, in, in the initial hospital and also in the Ortox Center. Uh, so, um, so we built our own ourselves and we also got in, um, brought in small partners in Switzerland, also from uh, the uh, resourceful countries uh, abroad and uh, we build it our own yeah and, and my next question would be thank you uh, do you have more ideas for more different kinds of training computers uh, yes definitely yes uh, we, um, we, we we don't you know if, if we talk about more ideas I uh, would say training yes uh, training for a surgery um, in brain surgery is different from other specialties because uh, here here a life a life component is highly at risk compared to uh, at least if you say talk about orthopedics or gynecology or any other field I see the life is at huge risk here and compared to the other so uh, we will we will also try for example in the future to move ourselves from training to that of pre-operative planning and and uh, assessing a surgical strategy before that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, the next question is from Rick. 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 
you speak? We can we can hear. You. I think it doesn't work. So I will just read out the question. Uh, Rick asks, were you funded when approaching investors? How did you approach the conflict of needing money to develop a prototype and need a prototype to convince investors to get money? Uh, none of this happened, <laughs> actually. Um, so in 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 a common uh, in a common world, I think uh, that the word investors sounds really very very nice, but uh, you should you should not or you should just not bring in investors at. Uh, in my opinion, not at the idea phase. Bootstrap. Uh, so, so try to bootstrap your uh, your your idea from the money that you have, or uh, also from the other resources that you could. Uh, which we say say call which we call as free lunch or like uh, free meal from small picks and pieces of money from prices and grants. So uh, we did not have or. We, how did you approach a conflict of needing money to develop? So I don't know what what does he mean by conflict of needing to develop, but uh, because it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's also part of my doctoral thesis. So I had uh, a prototype uh, in a different, for example, we had grant to develop that. But even if if you do not have this scenario, I would I would generally say that uh, be very careful in picking your investors. <laughs> and uh, that does, it does not it does not give an alarm signal but you know it's it's like actually your team member that you're going to be with working with them though you have like a couple of board meetings or uh, you have like a couple of calls and now and then but uh, your investors or someone who is bringing in money uh, ultra high potential in individuals or whoever has a lot of money um, you have to be very careful uh, you won't uh, in my opinion take money only if needed um, or try to try to uh, make your idea come true only with the little money that what you can have you have and, uh, um, so uh, so this this is my general uh, general impression that or my very good lesson I would say so uh, yes it depends on the nature of business uh, whether you wanted to accelerate make an like uh, if you if you bring in a v, VC like given 10x exit after four or five years uh, that that's totally different story it depends on the business but I would say if you are truly from like a very um, uh, mature uh, stage uh, make stops makes make small steps uh, don't give don't give away too much of your company uh, to to anyone because if, if you have a very clear goal that you want to like make 10 companies in 10 years or five companies in 10 years do that i would i would uh, i would say like yeah try to try to have as good uh, successful stories but nevertheless also failures is a good story uh, so you know in the next company what you should not do so um i, I would i would so, I think I, I convinced quite good some of in, in more more uh, the investment pitches I made was for uh, for uh, people uh, who did not know I would say some of our investors um, I did not even pitch <laughs> I did not even pitch it was just like a five minute talk or a referral through someone else who already know and um, all these people they just saw it and then they 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 see the future in the next ten years how it's going to be. And uh, that's how that's how I would I would say, yeah. Keep okay. it very casual. It should it should free flow. It should not be very very formal. Uh, it should be a free flow. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, we need to get to the end very soon. Um, one more question by Emily, and then Rishi, and then I would like to close. Um, I but then IP will be yes uh, uh, is shared with the university and uh, uh, if you're coming out from the University of Bern, Basel, and I think from Zurich, uh, you have Unitectra who are responsible for the tech transfer and uh, um, it's your institute and your boss or if you're a boss you have to go to the tech transfer office uh, approach them saying that. Uh, you wanted to uh, make a company out of this idea, and uh, it's quite it's quite a good process uh, that you have to sit with them and uh, license your IP at, at a certain uh, at certain conditions. Yeah. 
uh, and the app from Rishi, how these programs help you to find the right partners. Uh, if if uh, I understand from Rishi that the programs, uh, I I I know what uh, what we what Surgeon's Lab needed in the whole story. For example, it's like for example, I can just simply say, if you make a story uh, or a film, you know you know what 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 kind of cast you need in a movie. For example, so it's simply the same way. Where I was trying to hunt for the right cast in in, in my story. Those basically are, are the partners. You know, we basically approached them. Uh, and it was also like uh, that you should you know when you approach a partner you should always have a mutual benefit so it's a, it's a win-win game so uh, they should also win out of your collaboration or a, or a kind of help and this is how i think you should also keep this agenda when you sit for a conversation in your mind mm, yeah i think i answered all the questions wow Wonderful. So thank you very much, Frederick, for uh, I think we made it uh, just in time. And I think it's been super, super interesting. I hope all of you got the inspiration that you need to take the next step. Um, next step, obviously, would be to visit our websites um, to, to check out if those programs could be interesting to you, um, whether you are eligible. If you have any questions, obviously reach out um, to either us at VentureKick or um, to, to Frederick if something is, is very specific. Um, he, he told you that he may be contacted, so I think this is a great opportunity for you. Yeah, and um, maybe one little last favor I would like to ask you is um, if, you, if I could ask you for one more poll um, to tell us um, how you like this. And because this gives us the kind of input we need to prepare the next sessions. Thank you for all these answers. That's wonderful. Ten more seconds. Superb. Many thanks. Okay. All right. And um, to close, um, here's once again the resources. So for an overview of all the uh, financial support, check out grstiftung.ch. Specifically, if it's about Venture Kick, I think the program that Frederick told most intensely about, um, check out venturekick.ch. If you want an overview of basically all these programs that are available to, to you, um, check out venturelab.ch. You can subscribe at Swiss Startup Insights, and then you get a weekly overview of all the events that are coming up. If it's about internationalization, um, if you want to approach the Indian market, sicc.ch is the, the connection you can, you can um, approach. Then, uh, if you're still at a university, the ivyinstitute.org is a wonderful student organization to, to, to build connections to like-minded people. And last but not least, if you are in the field of diabetes, uh, also check out the DCB Innovation Challenge. So I hope this has been valuable to you. Um, and again, Thank you so much, Frederick, for taking the time. And um, yeah, we, we definitely hope that, that your product will be used by as many surgeons um, as, as, yeah, as they are in the world, right? Because we want them to be uh, excellent in the practice that they do. And um, yeah, if, if you need anything, 
let's reach out let's connect and have a wonderful day thank you Bye. do it thanks everybody cheers thank you thank you everybody goodbye bye bye